Hi folks, Toad here with Visordown.com and no surprises for guessing that today I want to talk about Kawasaki's supercharged ZH2. So first off, a very quick history lesson. If you don't know what the ZH2 is, where have you been? Uh, but it started with the H2 sports bike released in 2015. Two versions of that, there was the H2R, which was track only, not road legal, and over 300 horsepower, about 340 if you include ram air induction. So probably the most bonkers motorcycle that has ever been produced. The road going version of that is the H2, and that's got around about 234 horsepower, again with ram air induction. We reviewed that at the tail end of last year and even took it to Bruntingthorpe and did loads of performance testing and it is absolutely insane. From there, the H2 range extended and it gained the H2 SX SE, which is kind of more a sports touring bike. Um, I think of it more of an everyday H2 and it's got things like panniers and you've got luggage points and stuff like that. And it's a bit more of a comfortable H2 sports bike. And I mean, ever since those bikes have been sort of announced and released and the PR and marketing behind them has been absolutely phen phenomenal, um, the public has kind of been crying out for this bike here, which is the ZH2 Naked, because everybody really wanted to see what a supercharged 1000cc, 200 horsepower motor in a naked bike would feel like, in a naked Kawasaki would feel like. And uh, we've been lucky enough to have it for a few weeks. Unfortunately, it's been locked down, so the only riding that I've been able to do is kind of local trips to the shop and so on. But with the easing of restrictions, we are now allowed to ride to picturesque beauty spots like this for a bit of fresh air and a bit of time out of the house. Boris said it's all right, so I'm gonna take the opportunity to go and do it. And that's exactly what I've done. I've spent all day riding the ZH2 today. Um, and what do I think to it? It's absolutely phenomenal. And I'm just gonna go through why. I found this bike so easy to ride and so good natured and almost friendly riding it around the town. And it's so accessible and easy to ride. Um, and I was just absolutely blown away by it. I didn't think that a 200 horsepower bike could be that compliant and that good natured and just that easy going that you can just pootle to the shops on it and no one would know that you're riding a 200 horsepower bike. You could be on a, a, a moped for the amount of noise that it makes when you're just riding along slowly. And then today, we've come out and we've come on some proper decent riding roads. So I've done the road from Market Harbour to Uppingham, which is a really, really nice twisty, and then come out the back of Wakeley and along here to Seaton Viaduct for a little bit of a sit down and a, and, a, and a glass of pop. And this bike completely changes when you get onto a twisty road. It's got a proper split personality to it. And um, the easy going nature of it is still there if you take it easy, but when you start to push on, kind of feels like this thing hunkers down and it's just ready for a bit of a brawl. Um, it's still got that phenomenal power and that, that super, super widespread of torque. You just ride a, like a tsunami of torque from tick over all the way to whatever top speed of this thing is. I haven't even bothered to try and exploit it today. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a proper, proper street fighter out here on these back rows and all it wants to do is go and scratch its pegs and, and sort of shake its head and do big wheelies in first, second, third, even fourth gear if you really, really provoke it. It's a, a properly eye-opening road test today, I can tell you that much. Um, I'm just going to go through all of the, the specs of it. So it's quoted at 200 PS, which is a Z-German for horsepower. So it's about 197 horsepower there or thereabouts kicking in at peaking at about 11,000 RPM. Um, we've got 137 Newton meters of torque, um, which like I said, it seems to arrive at all of the RPM. They say it peaks at about eight and a half thousand, but it seems like you've got all the torque from any revs. I mean, it'll pull away in third gear without any fuss whatsoever, which I know you're never ever gonna do that on a bike, but it makes it feel pretty special when you can go from naught to 140 miles an hour without changing gear. The, the, the good points to the engine are the torque and the power and the delivery and the throttle is super, super smooth. If you rode the H2 sports bike, it did have a little bit of a snatchy throttle um, to it. That's all been sorted with the ZH2. It's just a, a beautifully sublime thing to ride. Uh, fast, slow, whatever you're doing, it is a bike that will just put a big, big grin on your face. The downside to the supercharging of the engine, I've said it before, it is a little bit thirsty. And because of all the, uh, the plenum chamber for the supercharger sits on top of the engine, uh, normally right where the big part of the fuel tank would be, there isn't a lot of space for fuel on this bike. It's got, I think it's a 16 litre tank. Um, most of it is under the seat, but then again, you will go out 
out for a 100 mile blast on it and you will pretty much empty that tank in, in that 100 miles if you are going to be riding like I have today. Um, just for note, this bike is pretty much brand new. It's not had its first service yet. So once it's been back, it's had the oil change, etc., etc. That will come up a little bit, I would expect. <laughs> Talking about the handling and, and how it just changes character once we got out, it's got a very, very good suspension system on it. So it's got a shower, big piston forks, separate function with compression, preload, uh, rebound damping adjustability, and a shower uh, gas cartridge charged um, rear shock absorber, again with the same adjustability. Um, there's no electronic suspension on this, so to keep it in the price range that where it's so competitive, it's about 15 grand for, for one of these, which when you look at the rest of the 200 horsepower sort of super naked class, they're all over 20,000 pounds, pretty much. Um, but it just feels like it's got two sides to the suspension, the compliantness and the, and the plushness and the kind of the easy goingness around town. As soon as you start pushing on it, it starts to feel more like a sports bike. Like I said, it just kind of, hunkers down and it just wants to get on with it and it just wants to go and scrape pegs and do wheelies and and shake its head it's uh it's a really impressive impressive bit of kit it doesn't force you into riding like that at any point it is just you know it's, ha it's how you ride it how fast you want to go is how fast it will go um and it's just a, a really really phenomenal bit of kit on the roads that i've been riding today it's been a thoroughly enjoyable afternoon spent in the sun i think i can say a uh, braking system on it is equally impressive. We've got Brembo M4 monoblock calipers up front and we've got a two-piston Nissan caliper at the rear. One of the good points about this bike is they haven't gone for Brembo master cylinders, which I think is great because it keeps the cost down and the Nissan ones that it's got, they're still radial mounted with adjustable span. They, You would not be able to tell the difference at the lever. It is still plush, you've got all the feel and you can really, really, really use the brakes just with one or two fingers. Um, so. It doesn't have Brembo, I don't think it needs it, and for the price point that it is, don't stick them on it, it's just going to push that up too much and uh, make it uncompetitive. So just going to go through what we like about this bike. Um, this is the biggest like list that I've ever had for a bike that I've reviewed, but I love the power and the torque and the, the way that they've structured the, the power and the torque and just it's just everywhere it's like an electric motorcycle to ride it just feels like an electric bike because you just open the throttle and it you there will be so much power and so much torque there that you can make the overtake that you need to make without downshifting where on a normal thousand cc naked you'd be blipping down the gears at least one or two um on this you can just open the throttle and you're waft past and it almost makes riding it seem a little bit serene and a little bit kind of like you're just wafting through the countryside because you're not frantically changing gear or worrying about what gear you need to be in for the next corner and you can just kind of ride the bit of road that's in front of you and not have to worry about all that other bollocks. Um, the comfort of this thing is very, very good. Uh, I've been out, like I said, I left the house at probably nine o'clock this morning. It's now about three o'clock. Um, probably done about 120, 140 miles of twisties and getting off and doing a bit of filming and so on. But it's really, really, really comfortable and it just makes you feel at home. You just, as soon as you get on the thing, you feel at home. It's neutral, uh, there are no tight spots, the seat to peg distance is very, very good. And the bars on this, they kind of sweep back to meet you. So you don't feel like you're hunched over the front end of the bike. You just feel like you're just sat neutrally on top of the thing. Um, and it just kind of, everything about the bike just comes up to meet you and sort of like, gives you a bit of a hug as you're riding it. It's really very, very well laid out. I also enjoy the, the split personality of it because I said earlier on that it's so accessible around town and it's so easy to ride around town. But then I love the fact that you can get out on a twisty road on a nice day like this in the countryside and go for a play. And all it wants to do is go for a, go and have a play with you. It's just an absolute, it's a, it's a phenomenally quick bike, but it never feels like it's riding you. You always feel like you're riding it. So what don't we like about the Kawasaki uh, ZH2? Um, after coming out with it today, and I've been trying to play around with the riding modes and changing the power down and traction control and so on and so forth, they are a little bit tricky to get your head around. And it's just because you're changing a mode on this side and then you're selecting it with your other hand and you kind of want it all to be on one side of the, the handlebar and one side of the switch gear to do everything. If you owned one and you bought one, it wouldn't be an issue because you'd just get used to it and it'd get ingrained. But uh, just for me, just today, just getting my head around the riding modes and changing the power and so on, you have to kind of long hold that button and then press that one to change it and then press that one again to select it. And it's a bit clumsy. Um, 
I did find as well this morning when I came out, it was on cold tyres, but the traction control is really, really intrusive to the point that it was turned up from riding it the other day when it had been raining in Coventry and I was nipping to the shop. So I turned the traction control up full and I hadn't turned it back down again. Um, and I pulled out and, and went off down the dual carriageway and I, I gave it a, a bit of a handful just to see what it had got. And it, it, I thought I'd turned the power down into the low power mode, but it wasn't even in a straight line. The traction control was trying to contain that 200 horsepower and stop the back wheel from spinning, um, which I did find a little bit. It confused the hell out of me for about half an hour until I pulled over and actually went in and then check the settings and that took about 10 minutes. I don't know, I think this bike has been such a long time coming. Uh, Kawasaki did a fantastic job with the H2. When that was released, the, the marketing hype and the PR that they, they built up from having it on the dyno in the NEC, shooting flames six foot into the air to James Hillier tanking one around the Isle of Man TT course, a H2R, is one of the coolest YouTube videos that I've ever seen in my life. If you've not seen it, Google James Hillier H2R Isle of Man um, lap. It's just, it's mind blowing what he does on that bike and it's mind blowing what that bike allows him to do at the Isle of Man TT course. Um, I also think that, that the hype had gone to such a level about this bike as well. Kawasaki again did a really good job of like hyping it up and the little leaked photos of it in a crate and so on and so forth. It almost reached the point where you thought, mm, is it gonna be that good? Or is it gonna, is the hype gonna outdo the actual bike? No, not a chance. It's the best, in my mind, the best super naked on the market that you can go out and buy today. It's got comfort, it's got accessibility, it's got rideability, it's got high speed handling and stability and it's got that supercharged 1000cc engine. If you want another 200 horse, horsepower super naked, you're gonna to have to pay at least five grand more than this. And at 15 grand, I think you're getting such a lot of bike for your money. The Kawasaki dealers are gonna be opening soon. And if you've not tried it, or you fancy one, or you've ridden the H2 sports bike, and this is, this is taking your eye, get down there and have a go, because you will not be disappointed. If you've liked this video, please do let us know in the comments below and don't forget to hit like, subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with all of our YouTube videos. For all the best news, reviews and motorcycle features, please head over to visordown.com. Thank you for watching, folks.